You know, I've had a really great career. Have you know, I'm leading a great life, and um, and it's because I found my thing. Right, music was my thing, and not just performing music, but you know, uh, producing it. Gene Dobbs Bradford is starting new chapters of his life and career. The departing president and CEO of Jazz St. Louis is heading to Savannah, Georgia for his new role as executive director of the Savannah Music Festival. Gene Dobbs Bradford has been at the helm of Jazz St. Louis more than two decades. Prior to that, he spent five years up the street at the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, where he was director of operations. A native of Maryland, Bradford graduated from the Eastman School, where his focus was classical music and performing the double bass. During that time, he also became adept at booking, promoting, and staging concerts. And I had my first blues band called the Crawling King Snakes. And I was out doing all the publicity for it and putting up posters and getting out and talking and, I, and, and negotiating the deal with the, with the club owners, which we got paid in beer and chicken wings, <laughs> which I thought was great because, uh, you know, that's all we were going to spend our money on anyway, so we might as well cut out the middleman. And uh, I realized uh, that I was having just as much fun putting on the concerts and, make, and making those arrangements as I was you know, performing, even though I love performing. And then as I was walking through uh, school one day, I saw a sign up on the wall. It said, make making beautiful music your business. And I'm like, ah, oh, that sounds like it's for me. And uh, it was a poster for uh, the American Symphony Orchestra League's uh, Orchestral Management Fellowship Program. I applied for it and I got in. I was kind of, I was one of the younger people to get in. Uh, to that program, but it was fantastic. I got to intern with the uh, Cleveland Orchestra, which was really, really nice. Um, the New Mexico Symphony and the Baltimore Symphony over the course of a year. Uh, and from there, I went on to uh, work for the Honolulu Symphony. I was production manager there for uh, three years. And then I came back uh, to, the, to the mainland to uh, work for the St. Louis Symphony. Bradford came to know Barbara Rose, who founded a performance series called Jazz at the Bistro at what was then the Hotel Majestic downtown. After her death in 1998, Bradford succeeded her. He recalled the early days here at the Bistro's Grand Center location, where he was very hands-on. I was running the sound when I was here and selling the tickets and seating people and bussing tables and, you know, all that. When I first came in, I spent the first summer repainting the whole building. Um, really? Because, yeah, because it, the old colors are sort of a, it's a little dated, you know, um, and I thought it needed a fresher look. I thought it needed something that looked a little bit more like a jazz club. Um, and so I, I did that, and um, it was great, but I think that some of that paint was still there, you know, 14 years later when we did the renovation. Which brings us to the year 2014, when the bistro space was gutted along with the building next door for a $10 million performance and music education complex inside what is now known as the Harold and Dorothy Stewart Center for Jazz. Our crew was there in June of that year and the following October on the heels of the reopening. The speakers have been tested and uh, the system's been flushed out, so we are ready to go. I get a lot of the credit for it, but you know, there were so many people that went into making this, this happen. Uh, so I think that you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic legacy. It's something definitely leaving it better than, than the way I found it. And even better than when I slapped that coat of paint on it. <laughs> on Bradford's watch, many of the world's most influential jazz artists have performed in Grand Center saxophonist Benny Golson, pianist and composer Herbie Hancock, violinist Regina Carter, and the artistic director of jazz at Lincoln Center, trumpeter Wynton Marsalis, are just a few. Gene Dobbs Bradford has been recognized for his efforts educating younger generations of musicians and supporting the area's considerable local talent but it's his collaborations with other arts institutions that may have the biggest impact. Jazz St. Louis and Opera Theater of St. Louis co-commissioned two operas in jazz. The first was Champion, 
based on the life of welterweight boxer Emil Griffith. Its world premiere was at the Loretto Hilton Theater in 2013. Six years later came the world premiere of Fire Shut Up in My Bones. It's based on the memoir by New York Times columnist Charles M. Blow, and the libretto was written by filmmaker and St. Louis native Casey Lemons. Both operas were composed by Grammy Award-winning trumpeter Terence Blanchard. When Fire was staged by the Metropolitan Opera in September of 2021, it made history as the Met's first performance of an opera by a black composer. When I was walking through the hall and I saw, you know, you know, I saw that sign about, you know, making beautiful music your business, what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring more black people to classical music. And here, years later, not even working in the orchestra world, you know, I'm looking out at the audience of the Metropolitan Opera and I'm seeing a lot of black faces there. To, to see a story that was written by an African-American the music composed and the libretto written by an African-American. And it tells an African-American story, you know? And I thought, wow, you know, we did it. We made a big change because it was a 138 year history. And that was the first time that that had happened. Jazz St. Louis supporters will gather here for a farewell reception. Proceeds from the ticket sales will go to the newly established Gene Dobbs Bradford Endowment Fund. Bradford hopes to ensure the continuation of everything that's been built so far. The only question possibly remaining for his fans is what will become of his popular blues band, the Gene Dobbs Bradford Experience. After all, his journey started as a musician. It's been a fun ride. We've had a good, you know, I've had a good run here. And now we'll see what's next. For Living St. Louis, I'm Ruth Ezel.